Joining me now, former presidential candidate, former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee. Governor, first, just your reaction to what we saw on Capitol Hill yesterday. Absolutely revolting. Uh, this was not an act of patriotism. This was an act of anarchy, and there can be no excuse for it. It's one thing to protest. We said that last summer when we saw people uh, protest actions that they felt were egregious. But what we saw at the Capitol yesterday uh, w was really a level of anger that had no place really in, in our culture. Uh, you can fill up a propane tank with 500 gallons that will heat your home and cook your food, but a misplaced spark will blow the whole thing up and take a lot of people with it. What we saw was a misplaced spark, an utter just emotional reaction that resulted in the death of a young woman and frankly a humiliation for the United States of America. And I hope these people who decided they were going to storm the Capitol and break windows and occupy Nancy Pelosi's office and vandalize the Capitol will understand they set this country back. They did not do their cause, whatever it was, any favor. And they make us all look stupid. And I, I'm just decidedly frustrated that this level of anarchy happened in our nation's capital, showing disrespect for our Constitution and for our way of life. The uh, President Trump's videotaped uh, remarks yesterday to tell people to stop rioting was lacking, to say the least. He said we had an election stolen from us. It was a landslide. The other side knows it. You need to go home now. We love you. It was condemned by both left and right, Democrat and Republican. What, are the, what do you want to hear from President Trump now? Because, again, he, he even went after his own vice president yesterday, telling him to not certify the Electoral College. Mike Pence stood up and said, it, this is not my, I do not have the power to do this under the Constitution. And people were certainly, um, their fears were eased by him acting and that as a check on what the president was telling him to do publicly. But what do you want to hear from President Trump now? I want him to end well. I mean, he's had four years of getting a lot of things done that many of us were hopeful for. Deregulation of business, lowering taxes, pushing back on China, standing up for the lives of unborn babies, uh, standing with Israel. This is a president who has a lot of accomplishments, and unfortunately, right now, nobody's talking about those. They're talking about yesterday. And in the few days that he has left before he uh, will turn the reins over to Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, uh, he needs to be the statesman. And that's something that I understand. He's angry about the election. Heck, I am, too. I, I don't know whether it was all in the up and up. But there's a time and a way to go about investigating that. And it, it doesn't involve storming the Capitol or inciting people to, uh, you know, just take law into their own hands. That's not how we resolve things. And we need to focus on the principles of what the movement was about of make America great and not get into the passion of saying, if it doesn't happen my way, I'll just burn the place down. That's not how we behave as adults. It's not how civilized people behave. And it's very important that America takes a step back, uh, that we start talking to each other rather than yelling at each other, and that we look for ways to, to make this country truly great. We didn't make it great yesterday. We made it look like something that we would run from, not something we would run to. I'm going to point to a piece that Miranda Devine at the New York Post uh, has written, and that in terms of where this leaves the Republican Party, and even conservatives, from the Senate with the victory of the Democrats in Georgia to Mike Pence, Trump destroys the party on the way out of the door. This looks like scorched earth. 
I think that's a little harsh. I don't think Trump destroyed the party. I think over the course of the past five years, he's helped to make the party something that would actually be a political force. And I go back to the points. Uh, his principles, the things that he stood for, putting America first, that's a good thing. I'm glad we've had a president that uh, didn't just roll over for China because of the big corporate interests that wanted him to. Uh, I'm glad that he wasn't owned by the donor class that has run D.C. for so long that you don't even know the difference between Democrats and Republicans. But what needs to happen is that the party takes those principles, those basic core values of making America our focal point, making us strong economically, morally, socially, making us that great nation that is a, a light to the rest of the world and not allow ourselves to devolve into the kind of anarchy that we saw yesterday in D.C. That has to be repudiated. It was disgusting, revolting. I hope the people who uh, but, incited it are prosecuted for it and mm -hmm. that they never show back up in public places like that again. But even before that rioting, you had two and one of the Georgia Senate races was called yesterday uh, in the middle of all this, but two extreme far left candidates have won Senate seats in Georgia, not moderate Democrats. These are as far left as they come. Yeah. So this leaves Trump's. So President Trump's legacy is in the short run. People will remember the chaos from yesterday. But the legacy, his economic and financial legacy, because of those two Democrats, far left Democrats winning in Georgia, could get ripped up in short order. Re, uh, regulations, regulations laid back on and taxes, particularly on corporations, hiked, undoing what would have been his, his economic legacy. And I think that's uh, an anxiety that we all have going into the next two years. But the good thing about America is we have elections every two years, and we have a chance for a course correction and a reset. So in 2022, if the Democrats do what I think they may do, and that's run the table and push things over just like they did in Obama's first two years, we're going to see a backlash, and you're going to see Republicans who stand up for basic conservative principles, economic sanity, we're going to see them get elected both to the Senate and the House, and then we're going to once again have some at least uh, balance of power in Washington and maybe stop what may be two years of uh, utter what I would call mm -hmm. philosophical chaos with far leftists running the U.S. government, which uh, that, that'll be an assault on our system as well. You condemned what happened yesterday. I heard swift condemnation from literally everyone who I follow, who is a member, you know, is a Republican, a well-known Republican, elected officials and otherwise, of what was going on yesterday. And I follow, I condemned the violence and looting and the rioting all summer long by Antifa and other left-wing agitators and rioters. That's not what you heard from the left. And in fact, as... Uh, Eric Erickson wrote on Twitter this morning, he was saying that you have to, to be to be blunt. You also have to mention that the left wing partisans for years have been advocating for harassing and bullying and defaming good people, people on the right and people who went into the Trump administration. So I want you to speak to what your own daughter, when she was the press secretary, had to endure in Lexington, Virginia. So all of this needs to stop, Governor. Well, it does, uh, Dagan. And, you know, it, for example, I think the way my daughter responded to the way she was thrown out of a restaurant and bullied and harassed at the White House Correspondents' Dinner uh, set, set the, the right tone. Do unto others what you would have them do unto you. She didn't scream back. She didn't break the window of the restaurant where she was asked to leave. She got up and quietly gathered her things, and she left. And she let the scorn fall upon that uh, bully restaurant owner. And when uh, the hideous comedian, who wasn't very funny, tried to harass her in front of thousands of people and on television, she didn't stand up and throw a plate of food at her. She sat there quietly with a benign smile, and afterwards she said, simply, it says more more about her than about me. That's how we handle this stuff. You know, we're raised that two wrongs don't make a right. That's how my mother raised me, is how I raised my daughter. 
and treat others like you want to be treated. Well, you don't want to have somebody spit in your face and yell and scream at you and burn your house down. So don't do it to anybody else. It's really that simple. Jesus taught us a basic, simple rule. Uh, we call it the golden rule. If we live by it, we'll live better. Thank you. Governor Huckabee, Mike Huckabee, always a pleasure. We'll see you soon, sir. Thank you again. Thank you, Dagan.